we get a chance to go and see Agra. Maybe even the Taj Mahal. Mm. Oh my god. We're getting hassled by rickshaw drivers and plenty. Last 400 rupees. No, he's okay to the end. 300, he's okay. An absolute nightmare. You've got to be really careful when you're in Agra that they don't rip you off. This is exactly the same, but bigger and better. I can't believe that's the Taj Mahal right behind me there. Okay, so this is the Beatles Agra. I'm about to embark on our longest journey in India yet. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple from the UK traveling through incredible India on a little rickshaw that we bought named Pete. But last Last week we had to unfortunately say goodbye to our tuk-tuk as our travel visa is running out and we will soon have to be leaving India to head back to the UK for the British summer. We've just had an amazing few days in Mumbai and we are now about to embark on one of our last big adventures to a Himalayan city called Rishikesh. But all does not go to plan on the longest journey we've undertaken in India to date. It's time for us to prepare ourselves for northern India by train and an adventure we will never forget. So wish us luck and let Let's go board that train at one of the busiest train terminals in the world. Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> we are off now. I'm, I'm about to embark on our longest journey in India yet. We are going from Mumbai, which is where we are now. So sad to be leaving Mumbai, but we're heading to Rishikesh in the very, very far north, north of Delhi even, up in the, up in the foothills of the Himalayas. That's the plan anyway. We are going via Agra. Now, if all goes to plan, we've got a day in Agra and you never know, we might get to go and see one of the seven wonders of the world, the Taj Mahal. But right now, we've got to catch a taxi and get to the station because in true Liam and Janine's fashion, we're running ridiculously late. <laughs> We made it to the train station. We've got a few minutes spare, which is unusual for us. The traffic was unusually kind. This is Mumbai CST, um, so the central train station. Mumbai has got the reputation for some of the busiest train stations and trains in the whole world. And you can really see it when you're here. We're going to platform number 18. That's how many platforms there are. We found it, platform 18. Now we have to find our carriage. And these trains go on for miles. They're so long. In here? Yeah, this could be us. Go back, go back out. On the wrong end. The wrong end of this coach. It'll take us ages to get down it like this. I'm so crushed. Are we going out? Yeah. Yeah, is this five uh, and six? Six. Five and six, this one, right? Five, six. But it's full of it's two beat two. Go, 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 go back, 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 back. Our beds are full of full of cushions and um, bed stuff for the train, so we can't we can't sit down. This is ours. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Get in there. We, need to, we got some, we got some <laughs> luggage. Serious luggage. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 So these are two AC carriages, which we've not traveled on yet, I don't think. Um, and you get uh, two per bit. So you get two people on the side and two people on that side as well. So, um, the other of the free AC ones have free per bit, so you get free benches per per wall basically. So you get just slightly less people. It's air conditioning, but it's it's nice. And I think the last time that we took took a train was from Hampi to Mysore, and it just was was a sleeper with just fan and not AC, and the the uh, hot air just dried Janine out. She became so dehydrated as she does. So this is better. So we've both had to move to a different seat um, and we're just right next to the seat that we was already in. <laughs> I don't know why we had to move. <laughs> 
but we have and we've just made our beds we've got two sheets a blanket and a pillow it's actually not too bad this very, very peaceful isn't it compared to the last one yeah oh my god yeah it's so so much better two ac is a lot more peaceful um it's really shaky though it's a lot oh, more you can't have you're on a train it's still a lot remember more shaky. Hell. god what, where do you think you are <laughs> With a shaky train and hours to pass, we squeezed onto one seat and watched Notting Hill before trying to grab some sleep. Our train arrived in Agra at 7 o'clock in the morning and we took an Uber to our hotel. We've just spent between three and four months in the whole of South India and now in the north. There's some really subtle differences. The vehicles are different, the people are different. There's a the smell of pan in the air, which is the uh, chewing tobacco and um, it's just different so far. It's hard, it's hard to put to coin it down. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, explain that more and express that more later. But now we're just going to our hotel at the crack of dawn, hoping that we can get an early check-in and get a shower maybe. And then maybe we get a chance to go and see Agra. Maybe even the Taj Mahal, you never know. Liam's not carrying any bags. I, it's not. On really purpose, lazy. it's not intentional. Yeah. I'd usually be the one that's carrying all of them. <laughs> Go on, get out of there, all of them. You, you, you mule. Okay, thank you. Oh, lovely. It'll do, it? Yeah. Oh, we finally made it after that really long train journey, which is so, just makes me so tired. You're trying to sleep and it's really bumpy and shaky and I can't sleep on the trains, to be honest. Um, but we've made it here and we've got a lovely hotel room. Um, it's pretty... It's, old fashioned. It's pretty old fashioned. It's old fashioned. <laughs> but it's nice. It's, it's got a nice comfortable bed. Oh, that's really bouncy. Oh, right. So it's a soft bed. Okay, so it's a soft bed. Look, it's a cheap hotel, all right? It's a soft bed. Oh, no, that, that's all right. That's all right, yeah. Our bedroom is lovely with a comfortable king size bed, a fan and aircon, a TV, tea making facilities and a bathroom with hot water. The hotel also offers a rooftop pool and restaurant and you can even see the Taj Mahal in the distance, somewhere we hope to visit. But first we need showers and a power nap to recharge. Okay, we finally left the hotel. Janine's had a sleep which is really good. I managed to catch up on a few things. We've had showers, we're okay, thank you. Um, we're getting hassled by rickshaw drivers a plenty, all trying to sell some sort of tour around the city. We're here for such a short amount of time. The last thing we want to do is go on some sort of huge wild goose chase, get scammed out of a load of money on these tours, which always seems to happen um, on these sort of arranged tours. Um, so we, we've decided we're going to just aim to go and see the Taj Mahal Palace. That's our main thing. And at sunset, hopefully, as well, because we hear it's quite nice at sunset, as you do. Um, but firstly, we're off to go and try and find some food. What do Agri what do people from Agra eat in the daytime for lunch, afternoon, supper, that sort of thing? We're going to go and find out now. We made our way to a highly rated restaurant we found on Google called Good Vibes, which sells a mix of North Indian and Western food. It is so exciting to be in North India. It's so different. The menu is completely different as well. So we're going to be ordering some things that are traditionally from the north now. We've said goodbye to Italy, which I'm going to miss, but so excited to try new North Indian food now. This is a veg curry. This is paratha, aloo paratha, which is famous in northern India. It's basically folded bread and folded bread like croissants, with, with, usually with butter, but this has got oil on it. Um, so, very good. And this is a dum aloo Kashmiri, a northern dish, and I'm going to try it for the first time ever. Mm. Oh my god, that's so good. That's so rich and spicy as well, really spicy. The Damalu Kashmiri was basically two huge potatoes in spicy curry sauce and is now my new favourite. The prata was to die for, all served with jeera rice, which is rice with cumin seeds. Something will definitely be taken back to the UK with us. We finished up our food and had an idea of where to go for dessert, but first we needed to find a rickshaw. How much? I can ask. Hello, this is how much? 20. Ah. No, uh, come back and yeah. 500 rupees. 500 rupees. Yeah, I'm asking him. He's saying 500. 300. Last 400 rupees. No, he's okay. 300. 300, he's saying. Okay, yeah. My punchy bed. That's very good. 300 rupees. Very good. 150. 150 there, 150 back. Yes, yes. So, what do you think? Okay. An absolute nightmare. You've got to be really careful when you're in Agra that they don't rip you off. 
Check Uber for the prices, pay a little more. Uber's, that's, that seems the fair thing. Uber's, Uber has got so many qualities that you can check the price on Uber if, it, if the town that you're in or the city you're in has got Uber, which this does. But we wanted to travel in one of these things. This is an electronic um, rickshaw. Electronic. electronic is very good. How many uh, kilometers this goes on 80, a charge? 80. 80? 80. 80? Yes, 80 kilometers for one, one charge or 80 kilometers. How long it takes to charge? How long? Uh, you plug in, it takes one hour, two hours? Sorry, uh, five, uh, five, six hours. Five, six hours? Yes. Okay. We headed off in the little electric rickshaw to find a sweet shop. This isn't just any sweet shop though. Agra is actually famous for a sweet called Peta. Peta is a sweet made by soaking ash gourds in flavoursome liquids and syrups to create a candy that has a sugar crisp exterior and an almost moist sticky interior with a chewy crystalline texture. You can buy these sweets all over Agra, however this is the most famous for being the original shop. We had to try some and we can confirm it's absolutely delicious, like a sugary syrup ball of chewy sweetness. On a complete sugar high we headed off to the main attraction, the Taj Mahal of course. Okay, so we're out the taxi now and we're heading to the Taj Mahal. The sun is getting lower and in the sky and we're hoping to get there to watch the sunset. Apparently, it's a really nice time to go and see the Taj Mahal when the sun sets. Apparently, it changes colour and I really want to see that. So, yeah, we're heading there now. How much? There's not a sunset discount, no? No. Whoa, it is 2,600 for two people to go into the Taj Mahal, which is <coughs> really ridiculously expensive. But they've kind of got you because you're not going to come all this way and say, no, it's too expensive. And if you convert it back to British pounds as well, it's not actually that much, but it's just in comparison to the prices out here in India, it is actually quite a bit. But we're going to pay it and go in and it's going to be excellent. I can't wait to see it. This is not allowed. Ma'am, take it out, please. So, we just went through security to get into the Taj Mahal and I'm going to actually have to speak really loudly now because they've taken my microphone and my tripod. Um, they don't want filming in there, obviously. So, yeah, we're just going to speak really, really loud from now on. <laughs> We made our way across the grounds, grabbing our first glimpse of the dome on top, enhancing the excitement we were both feeling. The Taj Mahal sits on the banks of the Yamuna River in Agra, in the North Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. It was commissioned by the fifth Mughal Emperor, Shah Jahan, in 1631 to house the tomb of his favourite wife, but later, Shah Jahan was entombed here also next to his beloved wife. The Taj Mahal is made of an ivory white marble and is adorned with over 40 different types of precious and semi precious precious jewels, including diamond, emeralds and sapphires. This stunning building is one of the new Seven Wonders of the World and attracts over 6 million visitors per year. They say that if the Taj Mahal was built today, it would cost over $1 billion to make. Oh my god, this is absolutely mind-blowing. It's like a picture postcard when you see it right here in front of you. It's absolutely perfect. It's like a painting or something. It's almost not real. It like feels like a mirage or something. A big stage painting. Yeah, it, do it doesn't, you know when you see things for the first time, it's not like that postcard that, or the picture that you've seen for your whole life. Well, this is. <laughs> this is exactly the same, but bigger and better. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so we've decided that we're going to go inside. If we can, we're going to see if we can get inside and see what it looks like. And it made me realise I've never seen any pictures or videos from the inside of the Taj Mahal before. So we're going to go and see if we can do that. Yeah, and probably uh, why you haven't, because they take your cameras off. Uh, they've yeah. already taken most of our camera equipment I know, off. they've barely left me with nothing here, but yeah, we'll see if it's possible anyway. That's really impressive. The sun, sun setting behind that, even though it's very silhouette it is a perspective I've never seen before. That is, you've only, only seen it up close, can you believe that? I've only seen it up close. Incredible. I can't believe that's the Taj Mahal right behind me there. I just can't believe it. It's so beautiful. 
the sun shining and reflecting. It's literally one of those moments that you're going to remember forever when you come here and see the Taj. It is that mind-blowing. We made it. We would have made it. After such an amazing time strolling the Taj Mahal at sunset, we headed back to our hotel and relaxed on the rooftop with a drink before calling it a night, as we have a 12 hour train journey to get up for tomorrow morning. You good to go? Good to go, I'm just checking out the, uh, I'm trying to find a, a train update because I've got, I've had um, text messages come through saying your train's four hours late but I think that's a past train that we've taken because it's taken so many trains over the last sort of few days um, so fingers crossed it says it's on time but who knows let's just get to the train station and find out it's only a four hour wait at a train station <laughs> <laughs> you must be the prettiest person in the whole of this oh, lift wow. <laughs> is he here? <laughs> Thank you so much. How long time again? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and this is the position now. It could be more. One eight four seven seven Kalingaot Kalpuri Yogi Nageshwar Rishikesh. Three hours late right now. Ah. Oh. And it's. Uh, the place where it is right now, that is from uh, here, more than three hours. Is it? So it could be more late. It we could go back. We could go back to the hotel. Right? Why don't you call the hotel and say our train's late? Can we go back? Now? Is this is this definitely this late? Is Oh yeah, can we go back to the hotel? It's okay. Thank you. So we have to go back to the hotel because our train is mega late, and the lovely taxi driver. Sorry, what's your name? Mabahan. Mabaham. Mabahan. Mabaham. Mabaham has just um, confirmed, double checked for us um, using an app that he's got and has confirmed that it's like three hours late minimum. So yeah, we're gonna have to try and sort something out because we can't wait at this train station for three hours. It could be five hours, it could be more, so. <sighs> the problem is, is that this is gonna take us to, um, it, we arrive at like almost 10 o'clock in the evening if, it, if it's on time. This is going to take us to one o'clock in the morning, and we have. We're going to tap a place called Tapa Van from the station, so that's going to take about. That's like, I don't know, it's like 15 kilometres or something like this. Um, so it's more messing about on the other side as well. So it's not, it's not ideal. We've decided to take a long haul taxi journey there, based on all of the information we've just been given, and it might save our trip. So we're going to do that, I think. Okay, what an absolute, well, it's actually turned out really well getting in this cab and now he is going to be taking us all the way to Rishikesh, so I'm kind of excited, <laughs> although we're spending a lot more money than we planned. Um, I'm excited for the road trip actually and to know that we can stop whenever we like to get food and you know all of that, whereas on the train you're, you're stuck on the train, so as much as I love the train journeys out here. I'm actually really looking forward to this. But anyway, he's stopped. We're waiting for a new driver. And, uh, and the guy, the taxi driver, has stopped to get us a cup of tea or a coffee. And I think he's making it over here. Hello. Hi. He's making the tea for you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. He washed this pan and then especially I told him oh. no smell even of the milk. Yeah. Nice Thank you so much it's a for that. Tea without sugar. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Chaman.
Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Ooh. You know you're in North India when you get little clay pots, don't you? Yeah. It's really amazing. You drink and then smash? Me? No, drink this and give back or drink and no, smash? No, no, smash. Smash? Use again. Cool. So, in India, this is, you get chai or we've got a black tea served in little clay pots in North India and you drink them, you just smash them on the ground. So it's okay for the environment and it's more hygienic as well. Happy days. With a huge change of events to get our heads around, two of the strongest teas we have ever drunk ever, we sat at the side of the road and waited for our driver who will be taking us all the way to a mountain city called Rishikesh, as we have something very exciting planned there. Our driver turned up and we made the nine hour journey to the mountains in northern India. Oh my gosh, we're here. I have no idea where we're going, but we're here. And it's light. We've got here in the light instead of what could have been four o'clock in the morning. What time is it? It's six o'clock. Six o'clock, six o'clock. It's actually really good. So pleased that this journey didn't make us arrive too late, we headed in and checked out our accommodation. It's lovely. Oh cool, look at the artwork. Oh, we've arrived. It's tiring traveling when you're doing, and you're not doing any exercise. It's just mentally tiring, you know, with all the near misses and crashes and fatalities that you might be out, might have had. Uh, but we've arrived in the room and uh, I think Janine was just so happy to see a big bed. It's all right. It's a hostel that we're staying in here. Um, it's okay. Um, we paid, I think, 1,800 a night for this because they've got a balcony. It's nice of a balcony. Now there's Himalayan views in Rishikesh Tapavan and that's what I saw on the website and this is what we got concrete jungle so not so nice and um, even though you know it's all right and everything but I think they were mis-selling it I say anything that gets inside your head is when they're mis-selling it and but so so our view is directly opposite a cafe <laughs> that people are going to be sat and watching us sat watching them which is all good but you know when you you got sold something else and you got given something else. Anyway, I've just had a word of reception and they said they're gonna move us to a nicer aspect tomorrow. It's just that it's the weekend and it gets full up. So that's that and uh, that's all good, good news. We're gonna go and have a little wander anyway and see what, this, uh, see what this building's all about. Our bedroom is basic, but with some real funky artwork on the back wall. Our bed is big and we have a fan, aircon, a bathroom with hot water and a balcony. This hostel is pretty quirky with a communal area, with a cinema sofa, games room, party zone, garden, chill out areas and I had a peep into the dormitories which looked pretty nice too. The more I looked the fonder I became of this hostel. We took showers then grabbed a couple of drinks before going to bed as we now have a majestic city upon the mountains to explore tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to the holy city of Rishikesh. We are so pleased to be here. Yes, they are the foothills of the Himalayas in the background. How nice it is to be back in the mountains without a rickshaw, obviously, with all the danger and stuff and adventures that we've been through before. Um, Rishikesh is famous. Uh, it's in the state of Uttarakhand, which is in North India, north of Agra. And it's famous because it lies on the banks of the, probably the world's most famous river, which is the River Ganges and the world's most holiest river as well. Mother Ganga is believed to be a goddess within herself and just coming here and bathing in her is supposed to have tremendous spiritual possibilities. For this very reason, it's developed a huge um, devotee pilgrimage um, following over the many, many, many years, decades, uh, thousands of years that it's been here uh, for rishis and sadhus and all the rest of it. And more, in more modern times, it is known as the world capital of yoga for that very reason it draws thousands of westerners every single year to this place who come to develop whatever spiritual practice they've got further whether it's yoga meditation or any derivative of those two um, it's also a completely vegetarian city alcohol is prohibited it's got strong uh, musical undertones because this is the very place that the Beatles came to and went to that ashram and changed their lives and their music forever
also Indians come here as well especially since the pandemic during the pandemic where Indian tourism has become a lot more popular people traveling with their own country and trekking's a big thing like water rafting there's even a bungee jump here now you can literally come to Rishikesh and do everything and for Westerners they can fly direct into Delhi Airport and then take a connecting flight to close to Rishikesh and be in Yogaland pretty quickly for that very reason it's become very convenient we now know where all of the tourists are they are right here doing yoga meditation sitting in western cafes eating vegan food which we're very happy about to see that on the menu as well and doing their thing this is going to be the place where we are going to be staying for a little while because we are about to embark on coming in the next couple of days our biggest challenge that i think we've ever done so far at least one of the biggest life challenges we've ever done um if you could can you guess what it is if you can guess what it is before the next episode you win a prize well a metaphorical prize so for now i'm gonna go and find janine before we go on a little beatles pilgrimage which we like to do and go and see all of the crazy stuff that you can do in rishikesh i'm gonna go find janine who hopefully has ordered ordered some vegan breakfast for us We found a plant-based omelette. I'm so excited. I haven't had a plant-based omelette for about two years now and I'm about to devour this good and proper. Okay, awesome omelette breakfast done. Uh, now we are off. We're gonna go and see what Rishikesh is all about. We headed off to go see the sights of Rishikesh. Heading towards the river, we caught a speedboat to the other side. The river looked absolutely breathtaking this morning, flowing in an emerald green color through the foothills of the Himalayas. It felt like we were in a fairy tale. Okay, so Rishikesh is split into two halves, if you, if you will. Uh, you've got the one half, which is where we're staying at the moment, which is called Tapavan, and then the Ganges, the beautiful blue, which luminescent blue Ganges, um, splits us off to this side, which is called Laxmanjula. Uh, Laxmanjula used to be joined by a bridge, which is no longer there anymore. I assume that something not very nice happened. Um, so you have to come across by boat, which is what we did, and it cost us 80 rupees per person to get across to do that. And uh, so now we, oh and yeah, so, and on this side of the river, it's very much like the other side, except it's a little bit more peaceful. There's a few more ashrams on this side, like old ashrams. I think some of these ashrams are like 150 years old. Um, obviously there's a lot of people here still who are here for a quite a long time, learning some spiritual practice or two. And uh, that generally makes up the most of the community over here. Because of that reason, there's a lot of shops like this one here, um, selling lots of paraphernalia to do with yoga lots of vegan friendly cafes restaurants really nice vibe I'll tell you something about being in the Himalayas there's a sort of a tingly energy to it and it's so 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 nice um, you, if you, you're having that goes with any sort of mountains it's so so vibrant and lovely really really nice place to hang out and be uh, anyway we are now going off to the Beatles ashram this is where the Beatles got their enlightenment and I'm really looking forward to it. As we approached the Beatles ashram, we observed a noticeable shift from Western cafes, shops and yoga accessories to a more authentic Indian atmosphere. The area was bustling with local devotees and pilgrims and we were greeted with the aroma of Indian cuisine. It was fascinating to witness the diversity of the surroundings as we strolled past the Ramjula Bridge en route to the Beatles ashram. Oh my gosh, that was the longest, hottest walk. <laughs> I think I've ever done. I'm so out of breath and it's been flat the whole way. It is so, so hot. And uh, we've walked quite a way, but I think we're there now. I'm just checking, it's very quiet and peaceful around here. What about the self-confident girl? Guess you really need to be with her. You don't want to go up here? No. You can. 
Oh, there's one missing. I know. Proper dodge. Oh, that one as well. I think I might leave it. Yeah, it looks. Oh! The whole, the whole, the whole building sort of. Help. Crumbling a bit. Come down. Okay, so this is the Beatles ashram. It's called the Beatles ashram now, and this is where they came in 1968. Um, invitation by Maharishi Mahash Yogi to practice transcendental meditation when the Beatles were taking a lot of psychedelic drugs at the time or some psychedelic drugs and uh, they came here and it completely changed them so much so it was so powerful the transcendental meditation that they renunciated taking um, drugs and psychedelic drugs afterwards and I think George Harrison ne it never left him at all until the day he died um, so it's a really really powerful place it's now derelict the forest department's taken it over but it's so cool to be here so cool, there's a vibe, there's an energy, and it's like Graceland. better place to end this video. We started off in Mumbai, we went to the Taj Mahal, just, and then we made it to Rishikesh and now in the Beatles ashram. What an adventure this one's been. A hell of an adventure, yet, as we mentioned earlier, the big, big challenge is in the next video. Um, you're gonna see the whole friggin' lot in the next video. Can you, have you guessed what it is yet? Have you guessed what we're gonna be doing? <clears throat> You've got until the next video to guess it. Remember, if you guess it, you win a metaphorical prize. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. It does mean a lot to the channel. Hit the like button and we'll see you next time for Liam and Janine's Those Happy Days Big, Big India Challenge. When we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life